I'm going to be looking at Psalm 31. Psalm 31 and verse 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. David had his trust in the Lord. Uh, years ago, I remember we would play this game as kids where you close your eyes, you fall backwards, and you say the words, I trust you. And you had to trust your friend enough to catch you and not just let you fall. So if I can trust a sinner to catch me, then surely I can trust an almighty God to catch me. Jude 24 says he's able to keep you from falling. David had his trust in the Lord. He said, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. And he says, let me never be ashamed. If you don't want to be ashamed, then you need to quit your sinful habits. Because those things don't bring anything but shame. In Romans 6.21 it says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You see these those works of the flesh that you do? The end of those things is death and they bring shame. Another way you don't have to be ashamed is if you study. Study the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. David says, Deliver me in thy righteousness. Daniel was delivered from the den of lions. Paul was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. In 2 Timothy 4.17, We were delivered from the power of darkness when we got saved. David says, Deliver me in thy righteousness. In Psalm 31, 2, it says, Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. David is asking for deliverance. He knows he can't do it on his own. He says, Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. So the Lord doesn't have to bow down to hear, but David talks to him just like he would talk to, to a friend. He says, Bow down thine ear to me. In Isaiah 59, 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. How does the Lord hear everyone talking at once? That's beyond our mind, but I know that he does. He doesn't even have to bow down his ear. But isn't it something that the God of heaven will bow down his ear? But David says, Deliver me speedily. Speedily. David is looking for quick results to his prayers. I mean, the Flash and Sonic and all these crazy cartoon characters and superhero characters that people look up to, uh, they may be fast, faster than a speeding bullet, faster than lightning and whatnot, but the Lord is faster than that. He can deliver you speedily. He controls the lightning that travels faster than that, faster than all those characters. He's in control of all that stuff. In Psalm 31, 2, it says, Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. The Lord is a strong rock. Uh, Jesus Christ is called a stone of stumbling and rock of offense. Much better than hard rock. Uh, during the second coming, the people will hide in the dens and rocks of the mountains. They got the wrong rock. They needed the strong rock. They're too busy thinking that we came from a rock. But they're thinking of the, the, like the literal rocks. But the Lord, he's the strong rock. He's a real house of defense. David says, be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. To simplify that for you, uh, he would destroy the all the records. He's a house of defense. He would destroy all the records for steals, blocks, and defensive rebounds in a game. He's a house of defense. He's a defensive powerhouse. Um, sometimes when my daughter plays on her toy basketball goal, I just stand next to it and block every shot just to be funny. But that's how it is when the devil tries to score one on the Lord. God's just standing there and he's just blocking every shot. He's never been dunked on. I mean, he's a true defensive powerhouse. If you want to wind up with some rings... 
at the Judgment City of Christ, then you should get on his team. I mean, he's a super team all by himself. Psalm 31, 3, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. David makes it personal here. He says he is his rock. He says, For thou art my rock and my fortress. So the Lord is God, but is he your God? Is it personal? Is he your fortress? Are you trusting in a house or a building that's just made by man's hands? The rich people have already made themselves luxurious underground bunkers. They probably think that they're going to be, can hide from any catastrophe that could ever come on this world. They think they're just going to get in there and hide. But how's that going to keep them safe from the wrath to come at the second coming? I mean, there's going to be an earthquake. I mean, they can't hide from God. Psalm 31, 3, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Today, the average person has no idea about God being their fortress like David did. I mean, their, their fortress is on Fortnite. But David says, For thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. And John sixteen thirteen says, He will guide you into all truth. David is king, but he's still willing to let the Lord lead. He knows who's king over him. Most people I come in contact with won't let their elders lead. They won't let their parents lead. They won't let their supervisor lead. I mean, they're just above the law. But you need to learn to follow the right people at the right time. In Psalm 31, 4, it says, Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. So just like me and you are fishers of men, the devil has fishers of men. Uh, they want to catch the saints and make them a flop. They want you to fail. Uh, they, they, lay, they lay the net privily. That's privately and secretly, trying to subtly trick you and get you. They do it privily. In 2 Peter 2, 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. You see, they lay that net privily. And once you get in the net, it's hard to get out on your own, so you need to claim the Lord as your strength. So pull me out of the, pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Claim God as your strength. Because it's hard for you to get out on your own strength. In Psalm 31, 5, it says, Into thine, thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Notice how this is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. Into thy hand, into thine hand I commit my spirit. In Luke 23, 46, it says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It's the same. Psalm 31, 5, Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. The Lord was redeemed from death, from out of the grave. It says in Acts 2, 27, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me. O oh Lord God of truth. David proudly served the God of truth. I'm glad he's not the God of lies. I mean, we dodged a bullet on that. I mean, thankfully, he's much more righteous than we are. Thankfully, he's not a mean God. Uh, let God be true, but every man a liar. I mean, God is much more righteous than we are. I'm glad that I'm not God. I'm glad that somebody else in this world isn't God. We'd be in a mess because there's no telling what he would do to us. In Psalm 31, 6, it says, I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. Okay, lying vanities. People who teach and believe something like water baptism for salvation are regarding lying vanities. I'll trust in the Lord. I'm not going to trust in water baptism, things like that. Revelation 22, 15 talks about those who loveth and maketh a lie. They regard lying vanities. 
uh, they regard the wrong way that's empty and leads to damnation rather than salvation. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. Psalm 31, 7, And I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul and adversities. David is, David is glad and rejoices in the Lord's mercy. Mercy is when God keeps you from something bad that you deserve. And we deserve hell, and he's keeping us from that because we're saved. It's God's mercy that I don't have to go. David deserved to be stoned, but he had the sheer mercies of David. David said, The Lord has considered my trouble. Isn't it great that an almighty God considers a bunch of people that don't consider him? He considers a bunch of people who never even give him a thought. In Hebrews 12, 3, it says, For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself. Consider him. Psalm 31, 8. And hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, that was set my feet in a large room. The Lord had preserved David all that time. He didn't shut him up in the hand of the enemy. And some of those giants could have picked David up with one hand and squeezed him. He never shut David up in the hand of the enemy. And those would have been some big hands that could have just snapped David like a twig. But instead of doing that, he sets, it says he set his feet in a large room. I mean, for me and you, when we got saved in Ephesians 2, 6, it says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He set my feet in a large room. That's a really large room up there in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Psalm 31, 8, And hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, and thou hast set my feet in a large room. Prophetically, this reminds me of Jesus Christ. He wasn't shut up in the hand of the enemy. Death couldn't get a grip on him. He rose from the dead and set his feet in a large room at the right hand of the Father. And then when we get saved, we're resurrected and sitting right there with him in his body. Psalm 31, 9 and 10, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eyes consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. So his eyes, his soul, his belly, his life, his years, his strength, and bones are consumed with trouble, sighing, and grief. His strength faileth because of iniquity. Iniquity can be your ruin. Ezekiel 18.30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Iniquity can ruin you if you just, just let it just stay in your life. David says, My strength faileth because of mine iniquity. My bones are consumed. It, it takes a toll on your physical body. Romans 8, 13 says, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Something that will help your body more than bodily exercise is living godly. Get your flesh under control. In 1 Timothy 4, 8, it says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. You see, body exercise only profits for this life you're presently in, but godliness is profitable for now and eternity. Now, the next verse definitely points us to Jesus Christ in Psalm 31, 11. It says, I was a reproach among all mine enemies. Look at that word reproach there. In Luke eleven forty five, then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. So Jesus was a reproach among all his enemies. Then it says, I was. A, so it says, I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. 
Let's look at that among my neighbors. In Mark 6, 3, it says, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Osaeus and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So he was a reproach among enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And in Psalm 31, 11, it says, And a fear to mine acquaintance. Let's look at that, a fear to mine acquaintance. In John 12, 42, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. So many of them believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. They didn't confess him because they were afraid. He was a fear to his acquaintance. And then it says in Psalm 31, 11, They that did see me without fled from me. They fled from him. In Matthew twenty six fifty six, it says, But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. They fled from him. So notice how so many ways that remind you of the Lord Jesus. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me, It says in Psalm 31, 12, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. The average person dies and is never thought of again. I mean, you think you're so special, but a few years after you die, the only people who remember you were the few who were closest to you. David says, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. How many people have passed on in your life, even maybe a faithful church member that you knew for years that passed away about 10 years ago? How often do you even think of that person? You're going to be forgotten as a dead man out of mind. David said, I am like a broken vessel. You see, you are a vessel, but if, you are a sa if you're saved, then you have a treasure inside. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Our vessels may not be any good, but one day we're going to get a new body. And while we just have this vessel, this earthly vessel, we do have a treasure inside. We've got the Holy Spirit inside, the new creatures inside. It says in Psalm 31, 13, For I have heard the slander of many, Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to, to take away my life. Slander, for, he says, for I have heard the slander of many. Slander is part of your life if you're a Christian. Paul talks about he, how he was slanderously reported in Romans 3.8. And when someone slanders you, then they're saying something bad about you that's not true. But that's okay, because in 1 Peter 3.16, it says, Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. You're going to be falsely accused. You're going to be slandered. In Matthew 5.11, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. It says in Psalm 31, 13, For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. Well, they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. So, they took counsel together against him. And things are being set up to eliminate you, Christians. They're going to have all kinds of different people from different ways of life taking counsel together against you you stand in the way of their progress they devise to take away your life even i mean you're a bug on the planet to them they took counsel against the lord and devised how they would kill him in john eleven fifty three, it says then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death but you see, don't fear man. Don't fear them that can kill the body. And then after that, have nothing that they can do. Fear him who is able to cast soul and body in hell. 
No man on earth has that power. Trust in the Lord. Don't put confidence in man. Psalm 31, 14, But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. When you read about those kings and the books of the kings, most of them didn't even know what God to call on. They acted like they didn't have any raising. They acted like they had never heard of David and Solomon who called on the real God. But David says, I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. He's not calling on Baal. He's not calling on any false god like you see most of these kings doing. He says in Psalm 31, 15, My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. David says, My times are in thy hand. Every single person on this earth is alive because way back when the Lord breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and now he's allowing you to keep breathing. So David says, my times are in thy hand. That means that God is allowing you to have more time. He's allowing you to keep living. I may not have men following me around trying to kill me like David did, but I, I've, got, I've got spiritual enemies trying to get me to mess up. David says, my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies. You need to call on the Lord to deliver you from principalities and powers, from the rulers of the darkness of this world, from spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are your enemies. Around this time of year, people watch all these horror movies like Friday the 13th and Halloween with Michael Myers. And those movies have one man, a man that's everybody's enemy, going around trying to kill people. I mean, David had way more men than that after him. And back as a lost person, I used to watch those wicked movies, and I always thought to myself, is there not a real man in this movie that would be willing to take this guy on and take him out? I mean, imagine the men that were after David. Giants, all kinds of mighty men that were after him trying to kill him. He says, deliver me from the hand of mine enemies. I mean, these these horror movies would, wouldn't scare David at all because that's his life, having enemies after him trying to kill him. I mean, David had some people persecuting him. And we may not be facing torture for the faith, but if you spoke up for the Lord, then I guarantee you that someone has mocked you before. And it says in 2 Timothy 3, 12, Yea, all that live godly, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you stick up for the Lord, stick with the Bible, somebody's going to persecute you. But David says in Psalm 31, 16, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. So make thy face to shine upon thy servant. In Numbers 6, 25 and 26, it says, The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So when his face shines on you, he's showing you his grace and giving you peace. When the light of the Lord shined on you, he revealed to you the truth of the gospel. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds which them hath bonded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. When you heard the gospel and received it, you had something shining on you. And then after that, after you get saved, then you can begin to shine. It says in Matthew five sixteen, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Psalm 31, 17. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. David doesn't want to be ashamed. Deep down, you don't want to be ashamed. You need to be saved so that you won't be ashamed at his appearing. And you don't want to see the Lord coming back and flaming fire, taking vengeance, and be ashamed that you aren't behind him, and instead you're in front of him. David says, let the wicked be ashamed, and they will definitely be ashamed. They will be silent in the grave 
but their souls will be screaming for a drop of water on their tongue like the rich man in Luke chapter 16. In Psalm 31, 18, it says, Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. I mean, this is what you see on the news. Lying lips speaking grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. It seems like every time they open their mouth, another lie spews out. The things they say are grievous to the righteous. I can't stand hearing them talk. Uh, I once heard a woman say that, you know, we need to ask permission from our child before we change their diaper. That's what this woman said on the news, and I'm thinking. Uh, for a moment, I thought, well, is this a Saturday Night Live sketch or something? But it turns out it was real, and that woman was just from Pluto or something. I mean, when I hear someone say something like that, that that's stu stupid, I, I just, I think they're crazy. When I hear someone who is the president of the United States say that a six-year-old boy should decide if he wants to be a man or a woman, I mean, that's grievous to me. I mean, they... And they speak it proudly, too. As the verse says, they think that's the way to go. I mean, they're proud of being a part of the Looney Tunes. Uh, sometimes when I go out in public in a bigger city close to me, I think to myself, I mean, what movie is this? Or what planet am I, am I on? You know, because of the stuff I'm seeing, it just can't be real. It's too science fiction. I mean, if you ever go into a mall and you walk by the makeup counter in Belk or something to get out to the mall... I mean, the creatures you see behind the counter are disturbing. It looks like someone dressed up for Halloween Town or something. But David says in Psalm 31, 18, Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. David wants the lying lips to be put to silence. He wouldn't be a big fan of CNN and Fox News. Because on there they speak grievous things proudly against the righteous. They're unashamed to get on there and bash the Bible, bash Christians, bash morals. They are liars. They have lying lips. It says in Isaiah 3, 9, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. They, they don't hide their sin. They don't hide their thoughts about sin. Notice David in Psalm 18, 19. It, he, he, you know, he said that these, they speak, these lies, they speak contempt, contemptuously against the righteous. And this is because you stand in the way of them being able to turn the world completely into some type of pervert paradise. I mean, they want the entire world to be a Neverland ranch where when they, they see what isn't theirs, they can just lust after it and then take it without consequence, whether it be your kid or your, or your car, your house or your bike or your mamma, whatever they see, they'll just take it. Just like Aiken, he, he saw it, he lusted after it, and then he took it. And that's what these... That's what these people want. But David, in Psalm eighteen nineteen, he says, He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Well, you got all these people who speak evil against you with lying lips. They hate you. They speak evil against you contemptuously. Uh, you're on the Lord's side and he delights in you. And he says in Psalm 31, 19, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. So notice that. Laid up for them that fear thee. God has some things laid up for them that fear him. In John 14, 12, it says, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. In Psalm 31, 20, it says, Thou shalt hide them 
in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. So the Lord is the hiding place. David says it over and over again. He kept David hidden from his enemies. He kept him safe from King Saul, who was a prideful man. Thou shalt hide them in secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Saul was a prideful man when he quit being little in his own sight. And you see, he'll, uh, the Lord will hide me and you. How many times has the Lord kept you safe from danger? Just the other day, a truck ran the red light and about hit me. I mean, it happens all the time. He will... I mean, he, he's going to hide the tribulation saints from that prideful man, the Antichrist, when they go running for their lives in the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe we go out in a pre-tribulation rapture, but I also believe some tribulation saints are going to be raptured sometime during the tribulation as well. And it says in Isaiah twenty six twenty, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. He's going to hide those tribulation saints, some of them, and hide them in his pavilion. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Psalm thirty-one twenty-one. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. Prophetically speaking, this could, could refer to uh, Sela Petra, where the tribulation saints are going to hide, hide out during that time, a strong city. Psalm thirty-one twenty-two: For I have said in mine haste, in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. David was quick to say in haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. But the Lord heard his voice, and sometimes you think the Lord has left you, but he really hasn't. He actually will never leave you. He, live, he lives in you permanently. In Psalm thirty-one twenty-three, O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. If the Lord can preserve his word, as you read in about in, in Psalm 12, then he can preserve you, and he's able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He says, O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. How do you know if you love the Lord? Well, do you desire to spend time with him? I mean, when you met your first love, you wanted to spend time with that person. Do you spend much time in prayer and reading? Do you think about what you read? When you think about what you read, you're thinking about what God said. Do you spend time thinking about the Lord? Do you remember how you would uh, talk on the phone for hours at a time to your mate? Uh, how much do you talk to the Lord? All these things show that you love God. David said that the Lord plentifully rewards the proud doer. The proud doer is going to get a reward. It won't be one that he wants, but he's going to get one. And you can get a reward for being evil that you don't want. The proud man is actually laying up painful treasures for himself in eternity. In Revelation 18, 5 through 6, it says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So, you can treasure up wrath to be poured out on you in romans 2 5 it says but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of god who will render to every man according to his deeds you can get a reward for being evil that you don't want you're just just the same way a good faithful christian is setting up treasures in heaven a wicked man is setting up treasures in hell, rewards in hell. The, he, he's treasuring up wrath. In Psalm thirty-one twenty-four, it says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So get courage. Joshua 1, 7, Only, thou, only be thou strong and very courageous. How can you be courageous? Well, remind yourself 
You serve Almighty God who can take care of an enemy. Remind yourself that this life isn't all there is. Remind yourself that you may suffer now, but you won't when you get to the other side. Put your hope in the Lord. Quit putting it in everything else.